Hello and welcome to part 12 of the series on how to create a chess game with React Chess. In this part we are going to work on the movement of the bishop. The bishop is the piece we see right here. As you can see we can take it, but if we drop it, it just snaps back to its original position and we are going to try to make it movable. So to start off we are going to open up our code right here and we are going to open up our referee. Inside of here we see that we have two different pieces already. We have the pawn, which we see right here. And down here we have our knight, like so. We want to copy this over. And we're going to put it down here. And we're going to replace knight with bishop, like so. And right here is going to come the movement logic and attack logic for the bishop. So to start off with the movement of the bishop, the bishop is a piece that is moving diagonally so that means that it can go from uh, this square here to this square here to here 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 and here also upper left and it can also go to the bottom right and the bottom left and for the bishop it can go as far as it can move as long as it doesn't touch any other pieces so in this example it cannot move because the pawns are in its way. If we move this pawn to here, the bishop can freely move to everywhere, uh, well, at least in this line. But for example, if we say that a pawn is here, then the bishop can only move one piece right here. And this pawn blocks its path. The bishop also attacks. It attacks in the same way as it moves. So for example, if we put a pawn right here, then the bishop can move all the way to there. And it can just take the pawn by moving on its square. So we are going to start with the movement. Right here we are going to check what position the uh, bishop has. And the initial position is initial position. Then we have a second variable which is the desired position. We already see them up here. And the desired position is the position where the bishop wants to move to. So when is a move legal for a bishop? Well, I just explained that the bishop can only move diagonally. So if we first start with moving to the upright corner, we see that we can move one to the right and then one up. And this pattern actually repeats itself. So right here we can again move right, up, right, up, right, up, right, up. So actually our x value is increasing by one the whole time. And while we are increasing our x value, our y value is decreasing by one. So this is going in pairs. And let's check if we can get that to work. So for the upright movement, we want to check if the desired position dot x minus the initial position dot x. So the desired position is right here. Initial position is right here. This would be one, two, three, four minus three is equal to one. So if that is equal to one and the desired position y is also equal to one we have two and one right here two minus one is one so we say desired position dot y minus initial position dot y is equal to one let's just lock something let's say console dot lock trying to move to the up right position like so And now if we refresh the page and we try to move the bishop to right here, we see that we try to move it to the upright position. And if we move it to the square behind that, it doesn't do anything. Up doesn't do right neither. And the other squares around it don't do anything either. So only this position. Well, that's one thing that we have right. But actually, instead of moving only to one square to the upright, we want to check this whole line. So all the way to there. How are you going to do that? If you want, you can pause the video to come up with an idea. I will tell you the way that I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it by using an array. Or well, actually by using a for loop. So right here we have our bishop. And we want to loop through an array of, let's say for example, while the x position is smaller than the width of the board. 
and the Y position is smaller than the height of the board, just keep checking the tiles. So it would actually check here, 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 here and here, every tile. So we are going to our code. And right here we have our single if statement, which checks if we move to the upper right. What if we want to expand this and we want to check one tile further? We would do it like this. Minus initial position dot x is equal to 2 and the desired position at y minus initial position at y is also equal to 2. Console.log trying to move two tiles well let's test it out i'm going to save it up and let's refresh the page let's see we have a little typo right here we need to make this into an else if like so let's save it up and refresh the page and now if we move two pieces we'll see trying to move two tiles one tile two tiles well let's repeat this process once more just to get an idea of how this works we're going to create this tree and this also tree. Let's save it up. And we are going to also alter the console. We are going to say trying to move three tiles. Let's refresh the page, move three tiles. And as you can see, we get the corresponding log. So we have our movement down, but we actually don't want to repeat this because as you can see, the if statements are actually pretty much the same, except that this value and this value is just increasing by one so we can fix that with a for loop so right here we're going to say for let i equals zero i smaller than let's say for example eight i plus plus and then we are going to check if desired position dot x minus initial position dot x is equal to i and desired position at y minus initial position dot y is also equal to y like so then we want to console.log moving and then we want to log the number of uh, i because we want to know how many squares we are moving and we are going to use string interpolation so we are going to use backticks right here and right here we are going to write moving i and then we want to say uh, squares like so we're going to close this and then we actually want to remove the other logic like so let's save this up and refresh the page and if it is working we should see moving one piece or one squares two squares three squares four and five and what happens if we well we cannot actually drop it outside of the board so that's actually really great but if we drop it on the same square, we see that we are moving zero squares. Well, this is only for the upper right, and we actually already see that this is working out quite nicely. There is one thing that we need to take care of, and that is that we want to limit the for loop. So I'm going to add a log right here, and we are going to write in this log looping through the array. We're going to save it up. And how many times do you think that this log will write to the console when we move our bishop one square to the right? I'm going to give you some time to think. The answer that I think is right is eight times. So let's move it to here. And we see that it is looping twice through that console log. We see that it has found the square and then we are looping six times. Two plus six is eight times. Well, what if we move to here? We see that the six times has increased to nine, which means that the new one has three and we have the uh, five remaining uh, logs. So that also comes to eight. As you can see, it is always looping eight times through that array. Well, this is not such a big deal for such a small game because it won't affect the performance that badly, but it is not a good coding habit. To improve this, we actually want to start looking from the bishop. And if we find the tile that we want to move to, for example, this one here, we actually want to stop looping through the array. So I'm going to refresh the page once more, I'm going to move through here. And we see that we loop twice to the array. First uh, array loop is 
the tile itself. And the second one is the piece or the block that we want to move. And as you can see, when we go to there, we see this. And actually, once we have our moving uh, one squares, so we have our desired tile, we don't want to loop through the array anymore. So we are first going to actually remove the uh, place where the bishop is standing. So as you can see, we see two logs. First one is for the bishop's place, and the second one is for the pawn's place. We're going to fix this by saying that we want to start from one, because a movement cannot be on the same place. That's not a movement, that's just standing still. So by increasing this to one and refreshing the page, we should only see one console log, as you can see. Now we have the uh, moving one squares directly after the looping to the array. But now the next thing is that we want to uh, remove the remaining logs. So there's one easy way to do this. And it is when we uh, go into this if statement, we say break. And that makes us break from the for loop. So if we refresh the page and we move to here, we see that we only move one square and then we stop looping to the array. Same if we go twice, we see that we went to the second square, we look uh, twice for a square and then we see that we are moving two squares. Well, if we go three squares, we should see a three right here, which is also correct. Four is the same and for five also. So now we have optimized the array by just adding a little break word. Again, it is not a lot of optimizing, but it is a little bit and it's the little bits that count. So we can actually remove the uh, logging because we now know that our array is efficient. And then we actually want to do the same for the upper left, bottom right and bottom left. So here we have upright. We are going to add a new one. Uh, we, go, we are going to call it bottom right movement like so and we are going to copy over this one to here and let's think for a moment if we move to the upper bottom or the bottom right movement to the bottom right squares we actually want to increase our x by one just the same as what we had before but we want to decrease our y value with one so instead of saying that our uh, y position equals y we actually want to say that this is equal to minus y we are going to rename this to moving up right and this to moving down right let's save this up refresh the page this should say upright yes and this should say down right yes so why does this look so like the same because as you can see right here it is actually almost the same the exception is that the y position is reversed. Well, that is just because right here we are moving up and right here we are moving down. That's the reason why we need to make this negative and this positive. We are next going to add the bottom left movement. Bottom left movement. And right here we actually want to keep the y as negative and we also want to make the x negative because we are not moving to the right, which is increasing the x. We are moving to the left, which is decreasing the x. So let's move to the bottom left. And you can see moving down left one squares. Just working. Nice. And now the last one is moving left up. As you can see, nothing is logging yet. We are going to fix that. Right here, instead of bottom left, we are going to add a new one, which will be top left movement. And then we want to make the y value positive again like so let's save it up refresh the page and let's move to the top left and as you can see we get a notification or a console log saying how much squares we are moving to the top left bottom left bottom right and the top right nice so what have we done until now we have uh, implemented the logic to get to know where we are moving upper left, bottom left, upper right, bottom right. We have implemented logic to check how many squares we are moving, which is one, two, three, four, five, or just how many you want. What we still need to do is we need to check if there are any pieces in our way. If there are pieces, we want to stop 
or we want to actually make the move invalid if there are no pieces it's okay the bishop can move and then the last thing to do is we want to make the attack move for the bishop which is just like i showed you earlier just attacking a piece by moving on its location or on its square like so so now that we have all the basics and the information for moving the bishop i'd really like to thank you for watching i hope you could follow along leave a like subscribe and comment down below and i see you in the next episode where we're going to work on the movement of the bishop bye